There is palpable buzz in the air that the New York Jets are interested in trading down. We'll talk about it. Plus, a specific trade down scenario has been presented between the Jets and the Las Vegas Raiders by an analyst. Would we dive in? Let's reveal here on the show. Zoinks. It is unequivocally the Super Bowl for New York Jet fans. Field Gates, baby. Field Gas Guardians. Let's bring him on the show. Come on, people. Connor Rogers is joining the show. What's up, Connor? But Trevor Gaston Sikama, baby. For me, personally, my favorite New York Jet of all time. Wow, it's great to be on. What an intro that was right there. Paul, you, nobody does an intro like you. Paul, you, you give the best intro of literally any podcast that I've, I've, I've ever seen. I'm going to lose my gas darn bananas. Hey, what's poppin' everybody? Paul Esden Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. Welcome to Boy Green Daily, a daily New York Jets video program also available where we get your podcast with a P. Here on the program, we appreciate you. All right, before we go any further, let's welcome back a valued guest on this show. That is Italy Jet, who has his own New York Jets content creation and more on his channels. Let's bring him in here on a Friday. Good morning, Italy Jet. Good morning, ciao, everyone. Hope everyone is good. Was sick last week. Now I'm doing much better. I got a got a trim here. Got a little haircut here. Nice. I got uh got Williams, Quentin Ooh, Williams, very nice. on, so. Legacy, yeah. Yes, I'm 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 loving. I'm loving. I'm doing good. How are you doing, Boy Green? I'm I'm doing awesome. Actually, just a quick aside, because you're like a guy who knows things. You know, you're kind of in the know. People say that you've okay. got like scoop skis. And, okay. Uh, All right. Do you have it inside on the new Jets jerseys? Do you have any, like, you got any people in on that? Because, like, you're the guy. You're the guy I know. When I when I go to the grocery store, they say, I need a jersey. I'm like, I know a guy who knows another guy who might know a guy that could help you. So uh, that's where I'm at here. Any any scoopage on the jerseys? As of right now, no. Mm-hmm. As of right now, no. I, 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 I would, but no, I, I, I don't. Okay. As of, They're keeping that. Um, tight seems so seems, seems like it very I can't, tight. I I wish because man I would love to get a hold of one of those mm. clean jerseys coming up. So, mm-hmm. but right now no no. But hey, hey if anything happens, I, I might put something out there. Who knows? Oh, okay, knows? yeah, please do. And uh, real quick, if you were to put something out there, what are your social media portals? Uh, Italy underscore Jet. Okay. All right. That's where people can find you. And also a quick plug right for uh, your YouTube channels and your uh, content creation you got going on. Quick plug. Let's get that in here at the top of the show. So in three weeks, uh, me, Jigaman, Porto, and Abby will be back for Jets Evening Brew. Can't wait for that. It's going to be on Wednesday nights. And then it's a flight squad is back. I'm pretty proud of this show. DKBX Jets and then Gunny Gummy Situation Report. We are back today, wow. 2 p.m. Central Time, 12 p.m. Vegas time. Uh, pretty excited about that. I got a couple other uh, shows in the works, so we'll see what happens. But yeah, as of right now, on with you. And then later today, Fridays are going to be a lot of my jet uh, content days and also sure. on Wednesdays as well. So pretty excited. Okay, I love it. Well, why don't we do this? Uh, again, we have a plan of what we're going to be talking about. There's also an article in the YouTube description down below about this uh, Jets Raiders proposed deal. But this kind of works out. I just tweeted this out as uh, we just started the show. It's going to wait till after, but it just goes along with what we're doing. This is from Field Yates in his ESPN column this morning, mm-hmm. and this is it. It's not something we don't already know. Jets are interested in trading back. Sure, we've heard that all yes. offseason, but we continue to hear buzz about it. Field Yates asked a bunch of NFL team personnel around the league, who are the most intriguing teams inside the top 10? And the name that kept coming up, according to Field Yates, was the Jets. And this was one of his quotes. The Jets lack a second round pick and have a plan now at both offensive tackle spots following an active offseason. Given the number of teams that will be angling hard for OTs early, could they the Jets be incentivized to move down. He gets that sense. And as I add my additional commentary, Joe Douglas has never traded down in the first round of any draft that he's been a part of with the New York Jets. And no, it does not count that pick swap with Aaron Rodgers last year, like a legitimate trade down of saying, hey, I'm trading down to pick up more this, that or the other. He has not yet 
let me ask you, Italy, right off the top. Do you believe this is the year that Joe Douglas finally trades down? I mean, I think it's 50-50 at this point. I don't think he's going to trade up. I oh, I think he's I, – I've said it before on this show, and I've said it before on other shows. He's either going to stay at 10 or he's going to drop down if it's a nice offer they can't refuse. It, that that that's what I that's what I think is he's always he's I mean he he's the type of guy I mean we the history with with anybody and no one's safe no one's safe when it comes to draft trades cuts no one's safe so I think I think it's either at Raiders when you when you when I saw that co- column that you sent me with heavy yeah. uh, dot com I was like that that's intriguing I know Minshew's in there with the Raiders sure I know you I know the in the article there's like Broncos too. Yeah. So I mean that that could be that could be interesting, but I, I wouldn't rule it out. I mean anything goes, anything goes with that one. But I will see what happens, right? Yeah. So let's get right into it again. If you guys are uh, watching or reading or w- whichever you prefer, watching, listening, anything in the YouTube description down below is an article. Uh, which was a trade proposal from Bleacher Report, and it was a trade down for the Jets, which, like I said, kind of goes hand in hand with this uh, Field Yates uh, info uh, that was just released. And it had the Jets trading down from 10 to 13. And now the goal for the Jets, obviously, is pick up as many as much capital as possible to add to the yeah. For the Raiders, it's to leapfrog two other teams that are in front of them in what we call the quarterback race, which is what potentially the Jets could exploit. Uh, The Jets have been doing some homework on quarterbacks, but we'll do some more on that later. So what could happen is the Raiders could want to move in front of Minnesota and Denver. Now, the trade package here is quite juicy. The Jets, and I yeah, I'll throw this up on the screen too so you guys can see it as I am uh, explaining it as well. Again, this is our heavy uh, trade proposal, but it's from Bleach Report. The Jets would receive the 13th overall pick, the 44th overall pick, and the 148th overall pick for just the 10th overall pick. Now, this would be a wild overpay uh, by the Raiders, but the key is if they're moving up for a quarterback or maybe one of the offensive tackles, because I heard the Raiders are interested in those waters as well, to leapfrog everybody, they would have to pay a premium, a price, a tax to be able to uh, move up potentially uh, in this draft. So it would be a massive overpay. There's just no other way to put it. Um, and I think I had the numbers here. It'd be overpaying by the approximate value of a late second rounder I had on the draft value chart. But here is a Bleacher Report's little blurb on why they believe the Raiders would do this. Quote, the Las Vegas Raiders are the ideal trade partner for the Jets to drop back from 10. Las Vegas is the only team between itself, Denver, and Minnesota with a second round pick. A three, uh, three pick jump to land a quarterback would come with a larger price tag. One, the Jets could certainly benefit from to add draft capital. That coming uh, from them. It sounds great on paper. I think the key is, as some of these people have been talking about here, you need the right quarterback to be there that the Raiders are in love with. And currently, the current buzz is that the Jets, uh, or excuse me, the NFL draft, will have four quarterbacks inside like the top six. So yeah, Raiders still be interested in whoever QB5 is or QB6. That's who they mm-hmm. potentially could move up for unless one of those four happen to slip to 10. Then it seems more obvious. So uh, they have kind of had some conversations with Penix, so maybe they would want to leapfrog to make sure they guarantee to get him. Jets could benefit. Mm-hmm. So this sounds great on paper. Could it actually happen? Uh, we'll see. Uh, and, uh, yeah, would love that trade. No-brainer. Everyone's loving the trade. Yeah. The- no, no no-brainer. I mean, I you got to get a second-round pick, getting a third-round pick there, too, and swapping first. That's, that's, that's textbook. That's textbook yeah. G- GM taking a yes on that one. Yeah, and it would now, be. And, and yeah, just for clarity, yeah. the Jets are beginning a first, second, and a fifth. A fifth rounder would be the other one uh, they're getting in exchange for the first round pick swap. Go ahead. Oh yeah, that's right. It was a fifth. Yeah, I, yeah. It, shoot, it, it, either way, third, fourth, fifth, another third, fourth, whatever. I mean, yeah, I, yeah. I still think it's great, no matter what. Yeah. Like I said, if if it's an offer in the comments, offer you can't refuse. Offer you can't refuse in that section. Yeah, again, it would be uh, very much so uh, in that category. 
uh, for what's available here potentially uh, for the New York Jets. I love everybody here in the chat, whether you're a part of the Boy Green Super Fan Club or not. Feel free to join it if you are watching on YouTube. We've uh, we just surged over 20 members recently, which we appreciate. So the arrow is pointing in the right direction for the channel. So we really appreciate it, everybody. Thank you very much. Also, make sure you guys like the video. Hit subscribe uh, down below. Yeah, I can't believe it because it's been funny how this draft process is kind of, uh, you know, how it's kind of gone around the loop is that they're like, okay, the top two guys are Caleb Williams and Drake mm. May. Those are the top right. two guys. And then Jay Daniels, right. ooh, highest yeah, guy. Then he's yeah. like leapfrog Drake May, basically. Yeah. And now J.J. Yeah. McCarthy has suddenly entered right. the mix as a guy right. who could even go number two overall, according to this ESPN article I was reading this morning. There's a lot of palpable buzz about that. So the quarterback class, just it just gets crazy. Uh, it just gets crazy really quick. Uh, for the New York Jets, which is uh, good news for the Jets, I think, in this case, because I would imagine the likelihood of the Jets taking a quarterback with the 10th overall pick are low, or in the first round in general, are probably low. So if you can get people picking things you wouldn't be picking anyway, that benefits you get, uh, you at 10. And it also, I think, I think Matthias Simon, if, and it brings up a good point, I think four quarterbacks will go Mm-hmm. We'll, we'll we'll go in, in the top in the top ten. It may, maybe even five quarterbacks. And I know Phil has a question for you um, down here. The latest one, Paul. Do you still do it if a doomsday is there at ten? Would you still do it? I I'll I'll, I'll start and then go you ahead. Can finish Please since it's since that's good for you. Honestly, I'm all for O line. I know Paul. We've talked about this a lot. Mm-hmm. Well, I, I'm I'm all for O line first, but if a Dunze is there, I would not be shocked if the Jets pull the trigger. And if I'm in that position, I I I might, I might. I mean, add him with a Mike Williams, add with a Garrett Wilson. I mean, I know I know Lazard's there. I get it, but I I, I might be intrigued. What about you? It would be it would be very difficult because I've been talking about for a few weeks here. Um... I've been talking about for a few weeks here, my top five big board for myself personally as a Jets guy heading into the draft. And that top five includes the top three wide receivers. It includes Joe Alt and Brock Bowers. Like that's my personal top five. And if those people are on the board, I'm strongly considering staying and picking outside of rare circumstances where I believe I could still get my guy and trade back a little bit. For instance, um, yeah, I agree. Yeah, yeah. I'm we like, just did a mock draft yesterday with Woody, the three round mock, and we were both doing them at the same time. And the mm-hmm. machine wouldn't let it happen, but an ideal scenario <laughs> would be for me uh, trading back to thirteen, fourteen, somewhere in that range. So basically, this Raiders trade or a Saints trade or something of that nature, and still getting Bowers, and then picking up whatever you can. Maybe it's a third, whatever it is, and that to me is intriguing. But boy, to have one of the big three wide receivers there. And that would also explain because I, uh, you know, again, this is an overpay according to the draft value chart, but it makes sense if it's an overpay for a variety of reasons. A Dunze is surprisingly on the board. One of the quarterbacks is surprisingly on the board. One of the mm-hmm. offensive tackles is surprisingly on the board. Like that would increase the price, which the Jets could take advantage of. I would not do it if a Dunze was on the board, ultimately. And, and and it's a great it's a great Paul uh, a first a second a fifth I would not because this to me it's an all in year and if you could get a player like a Dunze who so many people are high on so many people Daniel Jeremiah said he's his favorite player in the entire draft yeah and w- when well re- widely respected people like that who I cherish their coverage uh, say something like that that's not just something I cast away it would be. It'd be tantalizing. It'd be awesome mm-hmm. Uh, mm-hmm. if they traded back and got this haul. But this question is just, it's a little close to the sun. It's so. Oh, it is. Yeah. Yeah. I'm squirming a little. I'm squirming a little. But you could also, it, it like, if we all of a sudden make a, make a later trade mm-hmm. in the second, because we don't have a draft pick in the second round. I get that. Correct. But if you, but if you do make some kind of a trade, like, you could still get a good wide receiver, second, third, fourth round, and just go OT if you stay at the 10 spot. So I, I'm not really worried about all that, but I, I mean, Odunze is very intriguing. Yeah, again, it is compelling that the draft is deep at wide receiver, and there yeah. are names. Woody yesterday had, uh, with his trade down, he ended up getting a second rounder. We're talking names like Ricky Pearsaw out of Florida. We're talking names like, uh, 
you know, Roman Wilson out of Michigan, Lad McConkey's probably gone at that point, but like the Lad McConkey's of the world, whoever your guy is in that, uh, maybe it's uh, Johnny Wilson, maybe it's whoever, right? So there's that second, oh, third man, tier. Great. And, and maybe great. if you put yourself in that range, you can, but I just feel like there's such a difference between the Adunze, Neighbors, Harrison Jr. to all the other guys. Great. All the other guys are fun. All the other guys are intriguing. And uh, yeah. if the Jets get in a position, one of those guys end up being the player. It's just it's a gambling game of if you trade back and you hope to get one of those guys and none of those guys are there. That's where we could get a little uh, testy there. But no, a Dunce is tantalizing. So, no, I might decline it. But again, I go back to the main point of all of this fun conversation that we have. Right. It's right. really hard for the Jets to F this up. So, like, if they stay at 10 and take a Dunesay, it's going to be hard for people to complain. Maybe people still will. And to be honest, they probably still will. So that's great. But, you know, if they stay at 10 and take him, great. Trade down, great. This, that, or the other. I just think there's a lot of great, which puts me in a very uh, a great mindset heading into this draft that, you know, it's cherries on top of the pie for me. The draft is important. I'm not trying to denigrate the draft, but the Jets have put themselves right. in such a really good position that I like where they're at. I, I agree. I agree. I, I'm with you. It could go. It could go either way. I think it's one of those things where don't don't turn the channel off ever during the whole draft, first, second, and third day. I, I don't care where you're at. Yeah. So I think I I I will ask you this again. What? Sure. If if you're the Jets at ten, because mm -hmm. I know we talked about this many times. Yeah. Do you do you still stay with that pick, or would you trade down? In what scenario? Like any scenario, just like in general. Yeah, it's trade out as po much as possible. Like, that should be the main goal. Or do you think you should just keep it at 10? Just keep it at 10 and go for your pick. Or does it have to be intriguing? Like I've said, would Jay, does it have to be intriguing? Yeah, I'm not trading down for the sake of trading down. So if someone says, hey, man, I'll trade down. It's like just at the draft value or just below. And it would depend where the spot is, of course, too. I'm not like so like to your point, one of the one of the little caveats you gave on one of your points was like, you know, is the mentality like just to trade down, to trade down? No, I don't want to enter with that because that is a submissive in my head mentality to have that like I, the whole time I'm thinking about trading down. I think what you have to do is you have to let the draft fall to you. And if someone if if none of your guys are there. You better hope that someone else's guys are there, basically, because if none of your guys are there and no one else wants to trade up, because yeah, like, yeah. the reason you want to trade down outside of a potential depth pick makes sense, like offensive line or wide receiver, what have you. And you're fine with any of the guys. You have right. to hope that whoever you're potentially trading with is not OK with just some of the guys and they want a specific guy. And in theory, you could take advantage of it. So, again, I'm not opposed to trading down. It's not my number one goal. I'm not going and saying, boy, we better trade down no matter what. I, I'm not of that mentality. I am of let's enter with an open mind, a level of aggression. If something starts to fall within range and be willing to strike while the iron's hot and be prepared for such scenarios. And uh, as we've talked about with a few former GMs on the show, those kind of deals happen before the draft. Jets call Monty Austin for with the fourth overall pick for the draft. Hey, what would it cost? Okay, cool. Hey, Chargers, what would it cost? Okay, cool. To move up. Hey, what would it cost Giants? What would it cost Titans? You're you're not doing your job if you're not having those phone calls. And then you have the framework of what those deals look like. And then on draft day, if you want to strike, just having those conversations doesn't mean you have to trade up or have to trade down. But having those, I think, <clears throat> can be an important piece to the puzzle. It can be. Yeah, absolutely. I like it. I All like right, it. Let's go to a few I more like questions in here. We got a couple of questions in here. Um, Joey says, I wouldn't train down 11 to 18 unless it comes with a second. Unless he's talking about the 11 to 18 range or the 10, 10 to 18 drop. I agree. I wouldn't draw. So, okay. Like, for instance, if the Jets trade from, I just remember this because we've done this conversation a lot this offseason. If the Jets trade down, they're at 10, and they trade to either 17, 18, or deeper, you need a second-round pick to be a part of that equation because you're dropping to a different tier of prospect. However, if it's inside that range, so we're saying anywhere from 11 to 16, you're choosing to trade back, 
technically speaking, according to the value chart, that does not get you a second round pick. Now, just because the draft value chart says it doesn't get you a second round pick doesn't mean you won't on draft day. There's tax on draft day. There's bidding wars. There's all kinds of things that can happen. So that's the thing the Jets have to weigh. If 11 to 16 drop is only, let's say, I don't know, a third, maybe a third and a sixth or something, the Jets have to take a step back and say, okay, do we really want this third? Can we package two thirds up to move into the second? Like they got to have all these conversations about the value of what they're getting. The good news is, is after the first round is over, everyone has a chance to breathe in the draft room. Day one is the first round. You have like whatever it is. Uh, what's that? It's not quite 24 hours. It's a little less than that to get ready for day number two, which is Friday, which is the second and third round. And if the uh, Jets decide to, you know, <clears throat> If the Jets decide to uh, trade down from that, you have to see what's worth it. But I don't want to trade down just for the sake of trading down. And all the people that are so passionate in this chat, and I know there's a lot of them. Avital uh, joined me yesterday and talked about the trade down possibilities. I, I respect the trade down if it is right, if the price is right and uh, the right players, and you convince me, hey, Paul, we love these four guys. If we trade back three spots, we're guaranteed to get one of those four guys. A compelling case could be made, and uh, we can do it. Yes. I like it. Let's see. NY Jets FL says, I, I watched almost every Washington game. And Dunze is an elite player, may go even before Harrison. I think that could be the surprise. I'm trying to think of the draft year. Actually, I think this was the draft year. Uh, it was the year that the Raiders took Darius Hayward Bay in the top 10. And, uh, you know, everyone thought it was going to be Michael Crabtree. And Michael Crabtree started to slip. I think that was the one where, like, whoa, we thought it was this. And then this happened on draft day. Everyone says Marvin Harrison Jr., and then, whoa, it's Neighbors, or whoa, it's Adunze, and that's kind of like the early shockwave of the draft. That's possible from what everyone says, that uh, there is uh, some level of whatever the word is. There's some, uh, you know, discourse. Uh, there's some level of arguing about who truly is wide receiver one. Again, I'm still on Marvin Harrison Jr., but, boy, these other receivers, like Adunze mm. and Neighbors, are pretty damn good, too. Pretty damn good, too. Yeah, we're, uh, what is it? What's today? Friday? We are less yeah, than we're 20 days away from the NFL draft. We are Brees Hall days away from the 2024 NFL draft first round. It feels like it's coming more quicker than we think. Like it it's very much be is. Before you know it. Uh, let's see. Jennifer asks, what did Trader Joe give for AVT in his draft? That's a great question. Let me see if I can look that up quickly. So they went from like uh, 23 Did's... to 14, I believe is what it was. Yeah, they jumped, they jumped up and got him. Yeah. Um, yeah, they definitely that did. That was during the COVID year. Was it during the COVID year? Uh, it was the, well, I guess COVID lasted a few years, but it was 2021 is when that uh, happened. Well, to... uh, sorry, it was it was during like when they did the draft at home. Like he was in his basement, Goodell was in his basement when we got ABT, right? Um, that one I can't remember, unless they did that twice. Uh, I know they did it in 2020. That was the Mackay Becton draft that everyone was virtual because Mackay was, was at his Becton house. Or ABT? Oh, yeah. oh, maybe ABT was just at home. No, yeah. he was ABT at was at home he was, when he did he it. I remember okay. he was yeah. in like yeah. California, I assume, or wherever he was. But yeah, uh, okay, I, I'm I'm coming back to it now. There you go. Yeah, yeah, let me see. I see that we traded for him, but I gotta I gotta let me see if I could get this. We did. We trade. jumped jumped up and got him. Uh, Tucker, let's see what was that trade? Okay, here we go. Uh, let me. Oh, they sent three selections. Okay, let me see. All right, people, this is good though. This is good to know what uh, he did in the past. Okay, so here we go. In the trade, New York sent Minnesota two third-round picks, 66 and 86, along with the 23rd overall pick return. The Jets added uh, 143 overall. So here's what happened. Jets sent 23rd overall and two-thirds, 66 and 86. And in return, they get the 14th pick, which they were trading up for, plus a fourth. So uh, number 143 is what happened in the draft. And then you know, you can debate whether you like or don't like ABT, the two season ending injuries in back to back years, but uh, that was a trade up. I was fine with the trade up. That was a player I love, but great question, Jennifer, because to be honest, I couldn't remember for the life of me what that was. But, and that was a sizable jump, nine spots. That's a big jump. And thankfully, they had some extra capital where uh, they didn't have to trade anything more significant than that. But a nine pick jump, that is uh, significant. Very, very significant. There's no question about it. So that's a good question, though. Good question. All right. Um, yeah, well, it made, gotta... me think, made me think a little bit. Yeah, it did. I had to. Uh, d- definitely. Um, let's go to Pete here. He says, take Brock Bowers and then get the tackle in the third round. Yeah, I've talked to a few draft people. You just got to hope that the right tackle drops then because 
it I see when I do mock draft scenarios, which are just scenarios, but I see a lot of good guards at 72, which is the pick the Jets have. I don't normally see a lot of good tackles. So you just got to hope and pray if that's the direction you go, potentially. Yeah, you got to hope and pray. All right, let me yeah, keep... if, you dro- if you drop down, like Johnny, um, uh, Johnny said, if you go yeah. a couple down, give me a trade back, get Latham if a lad falls in, in the second. Point there you there. go. Yeah, that could be another option. Yeah, I'm searching through everyone's comments here, but I do like that one. Again, I was yesterday when I was doing the mock draft, and I may do it in the future, I was very, very close to um, taking J.C. Latham on my trade back instead of Olu Fashanu. I was very close. Um, oh, yeah. Ooh, okay. Yeah. yeah, I traded down with the Raiders, uh, ironically enough, and uh, they moved up, and I got uh, the first and second and, and some other, and I had to send them other stuff, but uh, the Jets got uh, Olu Fushanu, but I could have had Latham. Latham went to the next pick. So um, I have not seen this, so we have a Steezy McTeezy. Here on YouTube, have you guys seen the Up and Adam Spencer Rattler interview? Goosebumps. He's who we should grab later, trade into a second round and pick him. Uh, I did not see the interview. I've only seen clips going viral on social media. I don't think he'll have to move into the second. It sounds like he's going to be a third round later guy, third round and then beyond from what I hear. But hey, anything can happen, I guess. Uh, Yeah, that would be he'd be an interesting guy. He's been a popular guy uh, with the Jets people as we're trying to find who will be the next long term answer. Uh, at the position as the position uh, Kareem is arguing for Xavier Worthy who's the same height as Garrett Wilson runs a 4 2 one is solid hands come on mm. now great yak I don't know if the Jets will have a chance at him unless they just trade back significantly or shock the draft at 10 overall I guess because it sounds like he's going to go somewhere in that KC range back into the first round as a new wide receiver added in um, yeah that's what I would assume that's what I would assume for uh, Xavier Worthy. I think he's going somewhere in the 20s or end of the th- uh, first round. He is the guy who broke the combine record uh, for the 40-yard dash. He's a guy that I think uh, that's what's going to happen there. Um, uh, Youssef here says, somebody is listening. I said Rattler or Milton is our quarterback. Milton seems like he's going to be a late-round pick, and then Rattler seems like somewhere maybe day two, which I would say specifically third round or fourth round. But, again, sometimes you never know uh, what's going to happen. Uh, everyone, oh, uh, the Mets fans. Oh, yeah, congratulations, New York Mets. I was covering yeah. the Syracuse Mets game yesterday. The New York Mets got their first win of the season, and the Tigers their first loss of the season. So, yeah, uh, very nice. Way to go, all our Mets fans in the chat. Way to go. Way to go. I love John Sauer's commitment. Every day he tweets this. OT, <laughs> comma, OT, comma, OT. Uh, hey, for, passionate, for passionate. Hey, he 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 knows what he wants. That's yeah. That's, I, I, you can only can, respect can, that. All right. Uh, who is your favorite offensive tackle uh, in this draft that you want on the Jets, Italy? Um, I mean, I'm a big Alabama guy, so Latham okay. is up there for me. Okay. Uh, Fua, uh, Fuaga, and okay. then push, push sure. Shanu. I wouldn't mind that as well. Okay. Those are my three right now. I'm still doing a lot of studying on it. To see mm-hmm. if like if we trade back or anything. Yeah, but yeah. I do, guys. I do, I do like those three as, as right now. I think the big one, if we could ever do it right now, I mean that'd be great, is getting Joe All, but I don't think it's gonna happen. Yeah. Um, because because of his because I think he's gonna go top four, so top five. So yeah, I I'm I'm leaning more towards those three guys. But as I continue to do the more research, I I think I'm I think I might go a little more different route. But I really like Latham a lot, Boaga. Okay, I, I respect it. Um, people are asking me about this, so I just want to pull up the measurables to make sure I had those in front of me because I hear the – Paul, what's your take on Latham? Oh, wait, whoops, highlighted the wrong comment. There it is. Phil asked, Paul, what's your take on Latham? And I have the official measurements in front of me here from the combine, six six, 342 pounds. I mean, the big thing for me was – and this isn't fair to Latham, obviously, at all – I'm just always getting a little nervous about the weight stuff because of what we just had in Mackay Becton. So he's just a mountain of a man, obviously. Six yeah. foot six, 342 pounds, 35 and one eighths arms, and 11 inch hands. Like that's a frying pan. 11 inch hands. That's almost a foot. Jesus Christ. Or excuse my language. Good Lord, have mercy. I, I apologize. I. It's just, and I'm reading like the NFL draft profile from Lance Erline, which I read a couple weeks ago. 
Yeah. Bulldozer in human form. Well, that'll uh, that'll do it. And he's just got a lot of raw ability. I think a lot of people overreacted to the college football playoff. Um, I- I'm intrigued, but I will be honest. The reason why I haven't really talked a lot about him on any of my video shows is just because I have. And again, it's not fair to him as a prospect. Uh, I just had a fear with how Mackay Becton turned out that you bring in another really big guy, uh, a dancing bear, as a lot of people have called him, and then you can't right. control the weight on a consistent basis going into the NFL. So, uh, uh, you know, that's that's the part that kind of gets me. That's that's the part that uh, kind of gets me. So, no, super talented, and I think uh, he is entering the fray more often uh, for a lot of people. He is offering uh, a little bit more for a lot of people. And I see a lot of people seem to be Latham fans in here. Um, Matthias talking. Yeah, about there's a lot, of, a lot of Latham fans in here. Yeah, There is. And the only thing I'll say is this also, because like this goes to what Matthias just said, is that there's two pure left tackles that are at the top of this draft. And we all know who they are. They're Joe Alton and Olu Fashanu. Everyone else you're projecting. So like Ethan Latham, you're projecting. And that to me scares me. And this is, again, another unfair comparison. I will announce that at the beginning. When the Jets drafted, and I know you people never want to hear this name again. It's like saying rumpled silt skin or something. But <laughs> Vernon Golston. Okay. Oh boy. Yeah. yeah. And I have the Jersey in the closet. So I, I will you? wear that. I will wear oh. that draft weekend. I will absolutely wear that draft weekend. Oh wow. Oh uh, yeah. I still wear it. I don't get embarrassed. I don't burn jerseys. Like that is so oh, I don't burn jersey. Yeah, like how yeah. many people have that Jersey A Vernon goals in 56, not even the Jersey number change. He went to 50, his original OG 56 is a thousand percent of my closet. And I wear that. Um, Listen. I still got a Geno Smith jersey. And I, I got Geno. I got Jason okay Morrow. It, we can do a Jets jersey off one of these days. And hey, uh, the I'm most ready. obscure, weird ass <laughs> jerseys in there, which I do have. <laughs> okay, but, let, let, let's be honest, boy Green. This is yeah. the true one. Do you have a Zach Wilson or Sam Darnold jersey? I have both. Yes. Yeah, so oh, boy. <laughs> I have both. I will say proudly, I do not have a Christian Hackenberg, thank God. But I know some Jet fans oh, in my audience do. Yeah, I'm gonna have to really go through there and really because I've I have probably in the ballpark a 50 to 75 jerseys. Like I am a jersey freak, and it's both old school, new Same. school, all of it. Um, so I'm a freak as it pertains to jerseys. But uh, yeah, hey, I'm gonna have to go I'm in there and it. really get obscure. Like I said, Jace Amaro is in there. I got you know, uh, yeah, it, it gets weird. It can, Plaxico oh, Burris wow. is in there. Santonio Holmes is in there. Yo, uh, I got yeah, Santonio Holmes. Two or three um, Brett Favre Johnson. jerseys are in there for Pete's sake. Like, uh, you know, I jumped hey, on I, the train. I got Favre. I got yeah, Favre. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. Get guilty, boy. Hey, boy Sean Scout. Johnson, baby. Johnson, yeah, boy Scout dishonor yeah. here. Yeah, I, yeah. That, that happened. But like Vernon Golston, again, this is not a fair comparison <laughs> at all. Again, I'm saying that again, but it's just things like this in my head where you draft a guy and you say, "Hey, I know you did this at college, but we want you to do this." And you try to convert people. So like whether it's defensive end, outside linebacker, outside linebacker, defensive end, right tackle, left tackle, this or that. Like Hassan Reddick is a beautiful example of what we just got. He's yeah. this pass rusher extraordinaire. Arizona goes, yeah, we want you to be an off-ball linebacker. In his first three years, he looks like a bust <laughs> because he's doing nothing. And then all of a sudden, his final year, they're like, all right, fine. Go back to the right. edge rusher. And he had 12 and a half right. sacks or something. They're like, whoa, this guy's pretty good. And then he hits free agency, and then he starts going crazy everywhere else that he's gone. And now he's had four straight double-digit sack seasons. But, like – for three years, they wasted this poor man's career of Hassan Reddick. And maybe he stays in Arizona forever if they realize what the hell they have. But they change him to something else. And and again, I get that this is a horrible comparison. But just in my brain, making people do something that they're not used to doing, whether it's same offensive line, offensive line to a different position, those kind of things are in my brain and scare me. So I just want, if someone was a really awesome insert, I want them to remain a really awesome insert. For instance, even Joe Alt. Who I love. Okay. Yeah. He's a, he's a left tackle. People told or said on TV that when he was doing right tackle setups just to show scouts what it looked like, people said yeah. he looked awkward. And of course yeah. he did. I'm not blaming Joe Alt. He's played left tackle all the time. So just wiping your ass with the other hand, I imagine that's a little more difficult. Haven't tried it. I'll leave that to someone else to explore. But the fact of the matter is, is that you know, even Joe Alt saying, yeah, now you play left tackle. Let's throw you over at right tackle. That seems crazy. Like any of these guys, JC Latham. Hey, let's throw you over at left tackle. Maybe he can't make the tra- transition. People can, but those kind of things scare me. If I'm being transparent and being I mean, honest, totally which I valid. think the people appreciate. Totally so, valid. 
Oh, there you go. Is Boy Green a jinx? Very possible. Very possible. <laughs> I will tell you, for a while, whoever the Jets drafted in the first round, keep it simple, RC, on YouTube, this comment coming in. Yeah. No matter who they drafted, I immediately bought the jersey. Like, as soon as the jersey number was official, because oh, back in those days, even so. still... Like say if you go to NFL right. shop and buy the Jets first rounder, let's I, I make it a JC Latham because that's who we we're just talking about. It's JC Latham. Their pick is number one, but like once the Jets go, okay, he's he's going to be sixty six. They confirm it to the NFL. The NFL confirms the number, and then they send you the jersey. That's how it works for the you know jersey process. So I went Vernon Golston purchase, and then you know once his pick was official, <laughs> mail. Yeah. Boom, wearing it. So I could be a jinx. That could be that could be the commonality here with everything. That's, you, you, uh, that's very possible. You know, we might have to impact that another time. Later. Yeah, yeah, that, that, yeah. <laughs> with my therapist, me laying horizontal instead of vertical. That may be. Uh, I'll put some maybe. glasses on. I'll put a suit on. Yeah, please do. I'll some, be. I'll some be some head nods. You do I'll that put, a lot yeah, already. Right. With some head nods. Mm, mm. Tell <laughs> yeah, me I more. Do. I, yeah, do. Yeah, I do. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, you, so you already have most of it down, Pat. Uh, and then just Fake maybe cigar. Yeah. yeah, let me see if I can get like you know a pen to the face every once in a while. Oh, oh. Here, let me get a and then note taking kind of. Mm -hmm. Oh wow! Oh yeah. There we go. And then Got just it. randomly, no matter what my question is, like uh, let's say I say you know uh, J C Latham would be interesting, and you're just like, well, what did your mother think about that? I'm like, oh boy, oh boy, and all of a sudden well, now how, you're unpacking how families. Did... How'd that make you feel? See, that's it right there. How did that make you feel? Oh, geez. Uh, I, I don't know if I really want to get into that. And then you go like, oh, how'd that make your mother feel? Oh, oh, yeah. God. Oh, how'd that make your father feel? You know, where did this go in your life? Yeah. So uh, this could be a new show. You could be a Dr. Italy. That's another channel to explore, oh, potentially. I might have to do that. About. I might have to do it in the future, maybe. Yeah, I like that accent, too. That's uh, not too shabby. <laughs> By the way, everybody, uh, speaking of all the Joe Alt stuff, I believe that it will be the topic of choice beyond all the embarrassing stuff my dad's going to bring on the show tomorrow morning. I believe it's the Joe oh, Alt boy. conversation because the Jets met with Joe Alt this week, and Mike Francesa had some things to say about Joe Alt and the Jets. So uh, there might be a lot to unpack there with my dad who's a diehard Notre Dame fan. So uh, we may have to dive in on that topic. That may be the topic of choice, but nice. as always, I never lock anything in. It's 8.07 in the morning. The Jets could do some crazy-ass stuff that changes the show for tomorrow, so you always have to leave the door open. Be willing to call an audible at the line of scrimmage if that situation presents itself. So I just want to hmm. put that out into the universe. Um, it, well, you definitely put it out there. Yeah, that's for sure. I certainly did. So Italy again, uh, that is it. The The idea again is a trade back. Field the age dropped in an ESPN column that dropped literally right before our show started. It said the intrigue is the Jets in the top 10 with the thing to, to with the option to trade down. A lot of people think other NFL team personnel believe that's what the New York Jets will do. And thus also going beautifully with this uh, topic that we're talking about here. So that's a theme, everybody. And we just wanted to address it. Hey, I'm in. I'm in every Friday. Every Friday. We'll yes, <laughs> Italy is every Friday here on Boy Green Daily. Plus, of course, uh, we'll go with uh, my hop on pop tomorrow. We got WrestleMania coming up this weekend. There's a lot of Ooh. juice, a lot of chutzpah, Ooh. a lot of chutzpah, baby. So, guys, make sure you guys tune in. We have 500 plus people in the room. Make sure you guys like the video, hit subscribe on YouTube. That's a free way to contribute. But if you want to go the extra mile, you want to be the teacher's pet, you want to be sitting next to Boy Green's desk here and give me an apple every time that I come in in the morning, join the Boy Green Super Fan Club, which is a little money option available if you're watching on youtube for a small fee every month you can help support the show keep the lights on and uh you know like i said uh, brown nose uh, kiss up feel free absolutely i take bribes i absolutely take bribes i am going to be as transparent as i can about that so you want a bribe to become more of my favorite fan <laughs> i'm open to it feel free straight I, up i mean you heard it you heard it here first everyone. <laughs> yeah that's it i keep it real baby keep it real all right, everybody. Thanks for tuning into the show. We'll see you tomorrow with my father, some hop on pop and some embarrassing stories. That should be a lot of fun. We will enjoy it. Enjoy the rest of your Friday and uh, we'll chat tomorrow. Everybody 